Let me just set the premise really quick. Came up with this idea to discover, to decide like which is the ultimate champion status folding phone. Introducing the Google Pixel Fold. Samsung is a front runner in the evolution of foldable smartphones, advancing foldable technology year after year. I've been using folding phones for a really long time since the initial stuff came out from Samsung. And then this year we have this new entry, which is this Pixel Fold. The only foldable engineered by Google. What's a good way to try to feel out which is the superior device, or at least which one that I prefer more, using each of the two folding phones for a 24-hour period while being recorded. See the differences one after the other. Comparisons and contrasting characteristics are. I'm gonna start with the Pixel Fold for today. You're gonna to follow me. Together we're gonna to discover what we like and don't like about this phone. Tomorrow it'll be Z Fold 5 day, and in the end, we'll crown one or the other the champion currently of folding smartphone. All right, we are sitting at 97% battery, which Google is suggesting should last me one day and five hours. Typically, I have manual brightness. I'm not a huge fan of adaptive, so this thing is probably going to be on brightness blast for a lot of the day. So we'll get a more enhanced battery rundown experience. Even though the batteries are the same, like on paper, 4400 on the Z Fold 5, 4821 milliamp hours on the Pixel 4. We'll see if that makes any difference in real world. And the same price, which makes for a perfect comparison. I'm just so glad that there's options here in North America for folding devices for once. And I shouldn't even say North America because the Pixel Fold is US exclusive. Hopefully it does reasonably well. And then it's all of North America or all of the world. And we can pick whichever one is more suitable or whichever form factor we appreciate more. I guess this is a technically an update, but really not much of one because not much has happened. The uh, battery life is now 95%. Took a short phone call, responded to a couple texts, but I'm on a computer right now, so I'm not really using much battery. The other thing I should mention, I use this one a lot in the closed position. A lot of people ask me about these folding phones. They're like, oh, it's so cool when you unfold it, but maybe even the majority of the time in the closed position, which is, I think, why... Google and others have selected a wider format that also has an effect on battery life, right? Because if you're using the external display, you're using less battery. Th they call it smooth display. It automatically raises the refresh rate from 60 to 120 for some content, increases battery usage. They don't have like a pure 120 hertz lock, like a dynamic, but I'll have the same setting on a Samsung. Oh, you want to shoot this way? I think you're allowed to basically talk like this is a day in the life, so. Ryan, did you want to speak to me? It's like a fun uh, concept we're working on for video for the iPhone launch. And yeah, we're going to be giving some phones away. It's going to be cool. I don't know anything. I don't know anything about this. Yeah, it's all behind the scenes. So you're working behind the scenes. We're working behind the scenes. And in front of the scenes, too. <laughs> Are the people going to see more of you now, Ryan? Uh, today, possibly... Currently, though, we're gonna shoot a short. It's a day in the life after all. This is cool. This is the uh, new Xperia device. Look at the packaging. That is tiny. Is that the record for slimmest smartphone packaging? So what happened? We shot for, I don't know, like not even an hour. I had a call that I didn't take. And this is the thing, guys. I got to be honest with you. When I'm here in the studio, I'm not really checking my phone that much. I have screens everywhere. Will's giving me a laptop with some specs on it. So the phone usage is pretty low until I leave the studio where it becomes kind of the main computing device. But we'll check in anyways. I will call back the missed call. I'm at 94%. Hey, what's going on? It's much easier to deal with him when Otis is not part of it, eh? If Otis was here right now... <laughs> oh no! No! Deadly combination. Yeah, I knew, I knew it. You're nuts, dude. All right, so we're driving now, taking the team to go for lunch. I've got the Pixel Fold with me, and normally, if I'm in the car, then I'm gonna be using Android Auto, which in this case, in this vehicle is wireless. I don't have to plug it in. Sometimes I would plug it in because this would be a good opportunity to charge, but obviously we're trying to see the battery run down. So it is utilizing battery life in order to do this, and we're using a little bit of navigation. Painted black. 
I'm just, uh, oh, I was just checking some texts. That was not a reenactment that actually happened in real time. We're getting some food now. I'm starving. I'm gonna use my phone a little bit more, like not in an antisocial way. The weather is a little bit like almost gonna rain. I have outdoor activities planned for later. So I'll show you something I do frequently on this device. I use the weather app and specifically I use the radar map, which as you can see on this device is not really formatted correctly. Now that is a software thing. Maybe Maybe Google has to do some work here. I can't remember what happens on the fold. We'll find out in the next 24 hour period. So normally this would be a very rude thing to do, which is reply to an email while I'm sitting at lunch. I would never do that in Willie Do's presence, right? That's just bad manners and bad socializing. So when you open up your email app, you get this much better split layout keyboard, which is super comfortable to type on. Over the lazy dog. All uh, right, we are now at one day, one hour left, which is 85% battery life. We are kind of going down a little bit, even though I'm not using the phone all that much. I've probably opened messages and email. And obviously I've been checking my weather app to see if the game is going to be on tonight or if we're going to get rained on. What's up? Four o'clock today. Okay, yeah, I can do it. Yes, we can still tap even though we're carrying a fat book around. A recent video that was uploaded, I'm making sure everything is okay with it. YouTube Studio is a Google app. It's still not formatted correctly at all for a folding device. It's shrunken in the middle to the extent that having the device unfolded doesn't really help you at all. 325 in the afternoon, battery life, 83%. Now something you're gonna notice if you have this device, and I don't know if it's any better or worse. I'm gonna do my comparison, obviously tomorrow. In direct sunlight, you're getting obviously a lot more crease. A lot of people have said about this particular device is that it doesn't actually go completely flat. As you can tell, it has like a slight angle to it. It doesn't really affect anything, but it might make the crease appear more substantial, particularly in direct sunlight. This doesn't really bother me that much because as I said previously, I'm mostly using the device on the external display when I'm outside or quickly interacting with it on the go. I have an appointment this is unexpected, but to go look at a property in like half an hour, I guess you're going to come with me. I can't, I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to show you anything, but like it's a day in the life, right? Isn't that how this works? Huh? Hey. Yeah, we're already at the very back. Oh. Hey, I'm in the car. I'm in the car right now with Mo, Ryan, and Will. Okay, this is a crazy, weird, unusual development. Like this is not, this turned into not a typical day at all. We're now going to look at another property. I guess it's kind of good because we're like away from Wi-Fi, so it's on cellular more. It's probably hunting because we're out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm using the phone more because I'm taking calls and stuff. So anyway, we're going to check in as soon as we get to the next spot to see how the phone is doing. Hello? Oh, okay, turns. My battery, without a ton of usage, is down to 73% now. I'm at Subway now, it is late. The time is like 11.30. I think the last time I talked to you, I was actually in the car. I never made it back to the office. When I went to the office, I had to leave immediately. I used my phone a little bit, specifically for like a baseball coaching app, like to reference things during the game, not a ton, and also for the weather app, and then for a little bit of navigation. I also need to tell you that I accidentally plugged it in in the car for like three minutes before noticing that I did that and then remove the cable because I want to get accurate battery life. The battery now is sitting around 50% at 11.30 at night. It's a day in the life. This is a day in the life video. This is a real day in the life, including unexpected turns and problems and whatever else. We won the game though. We won, we won the game. Let's eat some subs. All right, guys, do I have a mic on? Am I good? Am I live? Am I hot? What can I tell you? I've actually been surprised. I, I, I wasn't paying attention to battery in the past. And then this 24 hour period, I was like, okay, let me really look at battery here. We're checking in here at pretty much the 24 hour mark. 
and I didn't charge it at night. I already told you about that one mishap. So it did charge for like three minutes off of a, not off of a fast charger, off of a standard USB-C port in the car. So it didn't, I don't even think it got a percentage out of it. But anyway, I have to be transparent about it. So what are we looking at now? 28% battery life. I also this morning took two very long phone calls on here. It's probably 20 minutes each. Some big findings for me, how little I actually use the unfolded orientation, but how great it is when you want to watch a video or if you're going to be browsing the web for more than five minutes. 80% of the day I'm in this format. And the reason that matters is because these two brands that we're comparing in this video have a totally different idea of what the ideal format is on the external display. And the last thing, which is obviously a huge component here is the camera department. But we're gonna shoot a bunch of video and photos on both of the devices. And then I'll analyze that content independently and sort of pick it apart on a much bigger display. So we'll do that with both devices. Now, since this thing is sitting at like 20% and we're 24 hours into this experience, it is time to charge it back up and check out this array of chargers from our partner anchor so it's their new prime lineup and they've got something for everyone so this is your typical fold down prong extremely portable adapter two type c one type a but here's the key this is 67 watts probably more powerful than anything your smartphone company ever gave you and it's going to be capable of charging things even beyond your smartphone next up what if you want 100 this didn't even get that much bigger 100 watts now is gonna be enough for most ultrabooks. Now, things get more interesting with these two new devices. Multi-device, fast charging, with displays on the screen and built-in power banks that are going to charge on this magnetic dock. How cool is this? Display on the front, letting you know what's coming in and what's going out in terms of power. USB-A, you've got two Type-C, obviously your power port on the back. You're like that. There's an even bigger unit. We're talking about big boy status here. 27,650 milliamp hours and 250 watt capable charger. Uh, two type C's which are both in and out and also your type A port. So this is currently sitting at 100% usage as you can see. 99 hours, 59 minutes remaining. Plus there's an app which helps you monitor it. We can see each port, what's being delivered. So since the power bank has Bluetooth built into it, it has a sort of find my feature. If you're traveling or camping or something like this and you're packing up and you misplace it, now you have some redundancy to track it down and the app is gonna help with that. Now the last device to talk about is the multi-device fast charger, another desktop style unit, 240 watts capable it's enough power to sit on your desk and charge your laptop and then other things as well three usb-c one usb-a power delivery 3.1 it does come with this base and this base is pretty robust so this is going to be a perfect desktop charger or a travel charger too it's small enough to go in your bag so lots of options from anchor tons of new products to choose from for your charging needs i'm sure that something in here is going to be the ideal solution for you whether it's for your folding phone or otherwise. All right, day two, let's start it off. I got the Z Fold 5 now, and I gotta be honest, right away, it's like familiar zone because I've used every version of this phone and this form factor. And I was curious, like, what was it gonna feel like coming from the Pixel Fold, which is such a different aspect ratio? Initial impressions here, this is just comfortable and cozy. I know we have this slender display on the front of it, and that can be an adjustment period for people coming from a traditional phone. But for somebody who's used this, you sort of already know the benefits. One-handed use is super easy because of how narrow it is you just reach to the other side even though it's a little bit chunky and for some reason because it starts off more slim the motivation to crack it open is there more often so i end up 
opening and closing this with one hand, that in and of itself is somewhat addictive. And just kind of like, okay, boom, in the pocket. This is probably the most satisfying version in the sense that now the hinge closes really uniformly. I'm not gonna go so far as to say it's better yet. There's some other things I wanna use. I wanna familiarize myself all over again, but so far the display looks really good as I expected. I expect the cameras to be comparable or competitive. I think the biggest part of this analysis is going to come down down to alternative approach to a folding device. Should it be tall and slim or should the external display take the place of a full on smartphone so you don't feel as compelled all the time to open it up. Anyway, this is 24 hours, 99% battery, everything else, every other setting identical. And this one, by the way, has like an extra step. Increase the maximum brightness using more battery. Look, I like bright screens. I expect to be outside at some point today. And I actually, I'm outside a fair bit in my personal life. So I like having that extra boost. We'll see what it does to battery life and we'll see how these two devices compare. Okay, so something that I noticed difference between between the Fold and the Pixel Fold, Z Fold, Pixel Fold, the Z Fold for some reason is better optimized for software. Well, not for some reason, probably because it's been around the longest. Certain applications that I use frequently are just by default filling the screen on the inside versus not doing so when it comes to the Pixel Fold, even applications made by Google themselves. For example, YouTube Studio, which I use frequently, like right now I'm posting a short via YouTube Studio. If I open YouTube Studio on the Pixel Fold, Google app, Google phone, it won't take up the entire display. It'll have a really strange aspect ratio with large bars on each side of it. Now, if I'm in a weather app, for example, like if I'm looking at radar or something and I open it up on the external display and then flip to the larger display on the inside, it just immediately knows that I want to look at that full frame. Whereas on the Pixel Fold, I'll have to relaunch that app manually to have it take up the entire display. So oftentimes that's not worth the hassle. And I end up just using the internal display, but not to its full potential. Now, this is not a huge issue because probably it's something that's going to be addressed via software, but you do need to use this device right now. And that is a shortcoming at the moment. Oh yeah, we can look at the battery. Still a lot, 96%. So the other thing I wanna mention before we continue with this day, I know the Pixel day was slightly unusual in the sense that I was probably out of the office a little bit more than I normally would be, but I just feel like now that I've done that, in order to have a fair comparison, we should also exit and be exclusively on cellular and see what that does to battery life. So we will aim roughly to replicate some of the activities from Pixel day on Z Fold day. Check out this fun little gadget here. This is a mechanical scale. I was making a video about this new folding phone from Honor, the Magic V2 folding phone. This thing is shockingly thin and light for a folding device. In fact, their target was the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the body, the thickness, the weight is almost identical, which is quite an achievement for a folding phone. It makes it the thinnest and lightest folding phone that I've ever seen. Just to show you, that this scale is balanced. I have two 20 gram weights. I'll put one on each end. Now the way to read this scale, this needle in the center will waver a little bit, but it'll settle on the black line in the center. And I can put the Pixel device on this side, and then I'll put the Z Fold 5 on this side. Now you'll see right away with a balanced scale, obviously we've got our weight on the Pixel side of things. And if I come across here and sort of make few adjustments you're gonna see we start to balance out. Now this is really subtle and obviously we're talking about a handful of grams difference. On its own you're like what? We're talking about a couple grams. But when the device already feels bulkier or heavier than the regular phone that you're used to there's a bit of a process of becoming uh, comfortable carrying it. It also has a tendency to want to slip out of your pocket a little bit more. Let's just be honest, nobody really wants a heavier thing in their pocket. And that's just the difference between these two phones, an iPhone 14 Pro Max, which a lot of people already know. This is a big phone to begin with doesn't even dent it. The 14 Pro Max is by no means a lightweight phone, but I think for most people, it's a good benchmark as like what a heavy standard phone already is. So to see this device, the Pixel Fold, be quite a bit heavier than that showcases one of the downsides of folding phones in general. And it makes it all that much more impressive that 
the new Honor Magic V2 is essentially the same thickness and weight as the non-folding iPhone. I'll show you what I mean. These two devices are almost identical. And in this case, you have a folding phone. So it is possible. So this one, much thinner and lighter. The Samsung Z Fold 5 fitting in the middle. And then obviously the Pixel Fold being the heaviest of the bunch and the most brick-like. So something I was doing with the Pixel Fold is I had the double tap on the back of the device to launch a wallet in order to pay for things, it works. And the main thing is you don't wanna like fully launch into your phone and launch the wallet app, it just takes too long. So on here, we can program our side button to open any app. That's your fingerprint scanner where you would normally unlock it. You can either quick launch the camera on a double press, which is the setting by default, or I could have it launch, I don't know, AccuWeather. And then if I double tap over here, I go into AccuWeather instead. I, I tend to use Weather Network a little more recently. We spent too much time talking about weather apps, but the rain affects my activities, all right? I didn't expect to become a weatherman. I just became a baseball coach and then I became a weatherman. In the olden days, there was a time where you had to have it launch Bixby. It still does that by default on a long press, but even that you can change and have it launch the power menu. And while we're talking about this fingerprint scanner, I'm just gonna go out and say it. It's a slightly wider target. It's better. It's a better fingerprint. It's more responsive to me. It's like recessed a little bit, but just my thumb lands there and it seems to unlock it at a higher rate of accuracy than the Pixel Fold. Since the device is more narrow when you're holding it in your other hand and you unlock with your finger you never think about that do you like people who are left-handed who have folding phone typically a right-handed person is going to unlock it like this but a left-handed person is going to unlock it like this i think the functionality of this implementation is slightly better it's not i'm not saying the pixel fold is unusable or anything like that it's just the target itself is more narrow and sometimes it just misses it Taking a little break here to set up, or actually we, we kind of like moved around a piece piece of baseball trading equipment. It tracks those who know, know it's a pretty cool thing. Is it not a promo? Actually, this will reach for the first one, but I don't know about the second one. Hunting cable piles for HDMI cables. This one's about six. Let's try that one, yeah. 87 to 18. The thing about having it low is you can see the batter and still see the display. But I don't, know, I don't want it on the floor, so I'm gonna have to figure out the right height. What's up, G? Hi. Right. We gotta go. Let's go. We're outside again, so now we're running on cellular. Signal's been fluctuating ever so slightly. It's LTE right now. This is a direct comparison to the activities yesterday, which definitely diminished the battery life more. I think I'm actually gonna go to a trail and maybe go for a little walk, snap some photos, and just see what sort of communications come through to the device. When it's this bright out, you realize the advantage of having the white car. You're about to crash. They say that like, especially when you've got an electric vehicle, like how much more efficient a lighter color is if you're in a really hot or sunny climate. Crease comparison time, uh, it's more or less the same. You just can pick up the crease, dust particles, everything looks terrible in direct sunlight, especially folding phones. However, I will say the difference here is that this one lays completely flat. Like this is wearing a later case right now, but the hinge here, it lays completely flat. It doesn't have that sort of like slightly bent aspect. It's sitting at three bars right now. It's 242 and my battery life is at 85%. Now, this might also be a good time to do a video test. So this is a video sample walking down a trail. You can see the amount of detail in the trees and the vibrant greens. And the audio you're hearing is gonna be through the device also. So I'm gonna try to open some satellite here to see exactly how far in I've made it. Look at how much forest we're in right now. That's cool. Like, look at this density. Whoa. Ooh, look at that spider. There's a moving shot. He's even, he kind of don't even spot him. You seeing that? 
Oh, you can see the eye on there. Oh, are we looking for an update? 81. Shot some video, shot some photos. Listen to that. It's crazy. It sounds like an alarm. 81% shot some video and shot some photo samples. Everything looks really good, honestly, on this display. We're gonna take more. Mo's gonna do a whole deal, but we gotta go get something to drink now. because It's hot. It's another announcing what I'm about to do. I'm about to do another thing. I may or may not use my phone to do that thing. I just overheard something. The next people were ordering and she said, I will do. Like not I will have or can I have or may I please or I will do. We are back at the studio now. It's going to have to be a somewhat early day. It's 4.11. I have to travel now. Uh, I was just on a phone, full screen by the way, uh, unfolded because I was over on the other side, not near the computer, and I, I booked a hotel and I had one phone call. Now I have, I'm about to have another phone call here. Anyway, before we do that, let's do a battery check-in. 72% for 12. I may be able to do another check-in later tonight and then obviously at the 24-hour mark. And I'll keep using the phone and we'll see where we end up. So it's 11 o'clock at night right now. I actually ended up using this device, the Z Fold 5, a lot more. By a lot more, I don't mean like more time. Each one of them is going to be 24 hours, but the screen was on on this one a lot more over the last few hours. I had to go on an hour long road trip, over two hours of Google Maps with the screen on. Because I didn't want to plug this in because I wanted to see what the battery rundown was, the battery life is 25%. I'm not going to charge it overnight. So we're going to see kind of what the drain is there. But we're already lower than we were when we checked in at the 24 hour mark with the Pixel Fold. But I actually think this is more impressive considering how much more I had this particular screen on. So it's not a knock on the Z Fold. It's just a sort of a different day. I'll see you guys at the 24 hour mark. Obviously a big component in any smartphone comparison, whether it's folding phones or not, the cameras matter to people. And I think the expectation, whether it's Samsung or, or Google, like the consumer expectation of those two brands is really premium camera performance. In their flagship models, we have our camera comparison. On the left over here, I have the Z Fold 5. And on the right, I have the Pixel Fold. We have picture samples, audio samples, video samples. So the Samsung photo here, appears to have brighter highlights. Like if I look at the trees in the back, if you have any experience with Pixel devices, you know the blacks tend to get crushed and that's kind of a little bit more what's happening in the Pixel photo. Here's the One X camera. So this is one that's gonna get a little bit more use. Funny enough, same thing as, as I said in the last one, kind of continues. Will has a little bit more kind of reddish tone in his skin here on the Pixel compared to the Samsung, which is interesting because Samsung does have a reputation for saturation. All right, time to move on to the 3X. And this one is probably the most different. It's weird. Like Will looks really washed out here on the Samsung and he might be slightly too saturated on the Pixel, but either way, the Pixel again is giving a little bit more punch on the color. We're all the way up to 5X now. Same thing keeps happening. Will, you're too pale on the Samsung, no? Like look at his hand, look at Will's hand. And then look at his hand in reality right here. This is selfie with the back camera. One of the benefits here of folding phones, you can frame yourself up, but then use your better camera, which is your rear facing camera. This is funny because I would say the Samsung looks sharper here. Like look at the Nike logo, look at the hoodie, like the fibers on the hoodie. Mo almost looks a little beautified on the Pixel, which I'm not a huge fan of. Well, this is the internal selfie camera. So this is a huge advantage, obviously for the Pixel. It doesn't, it's not an under display. So if you use this camera a lot, the Pixel is gonna have an advantage. If you don't use it very much, you might consider the Samsung having the advantage because the camera itself is hidden when it's not in use. So here we have our portrait effect. Both of these are pretty good. The Pixel is doing something weird with that tree trunk in the right. Now we've got a 2X, and this is just not as good in general. However, the Samsung's doing better than the Pixel. 
Let's go ahead and get into some macro shots. Both of these are beautiful. Man, I love macro shots coming off of uh, smartphones. So impressive what you can do with this today. It's tough. You're getting into preference land here because they're both great. We're now into the video department. 4K video, this is the standard mode. And you can see the stabilization is behaving a lot differently. Also the exposure is going bananas on the pixel. Just jumping around like crazy. 4K video action mode. Now, Pixel's still doing funky uh, exposure stuff, jumping a little bit. Oh, here we have our audio test. A little bit of wind, a little boom, 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 boom. Oh, you can hear, I can hear the wind reduction working on the Pixel here. Oh, and then we get hit with some major wind when we flip back to the Samsung. This is a tough one for me because it's like, yeah, I don't want the sound of wind, but then wind reduction sound has that like tinniness and that digital kind of sound to it. This is funny because the stabilization here, just walking, why am I jittering on the Pixel? Why am I jittering? It's so much smoother on the Samsung for video. Uh, we have some night mode photos here as well. It takes a little longer on the Pixel. This is kind of like how the Pixel treats photos in general though. It's not gonna really boost the highlights to the degree that the Samsung will. Crushed blacks, the kind of high contrast. This is a personal preference thing. For me, the Pixel is maybe more accurate, which is a weird thing to say about night mode. But on the Samsung, you're gonna get more detail. You're gonna see more things if that's what you want. You take a picture of a group and it's just a matter of like, hey, let's make sure everybody's face gets exposed here. Having that lift and the kind of mid-tones is probably gonna achieve that slightly better. So this is, this is taste, this is preference. All right, so it has been 24 hours on the Z Fold 5 now, and we finished up with like 9% battery life. It sounds bad because you're like, wait a sec, I think the Pixel is better than that, but this is not an extremely scientific test. wasn't meant to be. It's a kind of real life experience. It's a little bit more authentic to the way that I use and test these things, and maybe it's the same for you that different days result in different things. The batteries are pretty comparable. If anything, I'd give the pixel slight edge but not by a not by a landslide in my case the biggest extra battery drain on the z fold was my travel and my dedicated navigation use with the screen on so i wouldn't say that that's a huge differentiating characteristic it was just an interesting thing here's my main takeaway a kind of unexpected takeaway here i went into this expecting these two phones to be a lot like one another i went into this expecting you know what it's a coin flip pick whichever one you want they're extremely similar i recognize that they're not that similar and they feel completely different and the way I use them is completely different and let me explain what I mean by that. So I had used this form factor previously. This is very similar to the previous generation Z Folds and this is where my relationship with folding phones kind of changed. The display on the front here, the aspect ratio of the display on the front, the shape of the display on the front, this meant that I was opening the phone a lot less frequently. Now, I couldn't really remember how much less frequently, but definitely less frequently. But when I did the next 24 hours with the Z Fold 5 and my familiarity with previous Z Fold models, this became a thing that I was opening almost every time. Yes, I was getting some quick things done on the external display, but even typing on this narrow screen, just, it's, a, it's irritating enough that you end up doing this. And here's the other side of it. For some reason, opening the phone when it's more narrow to begin with feels more natural. This movement, this, this uh, action here, for some reason is more approachable than this one, where you end up with a wider opening from the jump. Don't ask me why, that's a personal experience. It may not be the same for you, but I think it's a combination of the way it feels to open and close it, the height, the dimension of the external display, but ultimately what I'm trying to get at is that the Z Fold 5 for me, I was using it far more in its open state than I was in its closed state. And I was far more irritated by its closed state than I was on this device. Now the downside on the Pixel is that I feel like I wasn't taking advantage of the unfolded state often enough because I just kind of forget and be like, you know what, this screen on the outside's fine. I'm responding to messages. I'm really only unfolding it if I have some sort of extended period where I'm gonna watch something. And it turns out for me in, in my life currently, 
That's a fairly rare occurrence, so most of the usage here ended up like this. The camera test is kind of a mix. Some aspects of the Pixel I prefer, and some aspects of the Samsung, I don't notice a, a large difference in performance. Outside of the fingerprint scanner, which I would say is superior for me on the Samsung device, it's like a more recessed approach, kind of just lands a little better on my thumb as opposed to reaching up above the volume rocker on the Pixel. I thought that was a little bit odd. The weight is another thing to consider. The Pixel Fold might be the heaviest brick that I've ever put in my pocket. They're both bricks. Some of what's happening with those recent Honor devices has me excited for what future versions of these could be like. At the moment, they're both bricks compared to standard smartphones, and you will notice that added weight. Think the biggest differentiator here comes down to form factor. I probably could have guessed that early on, but I just didn't expect it to be so exaggerated in use. You just think, okay, it's two folding phones, big deal. Like they're gonna basically operate and you'll use them the same way. Not the case at all. This one here is narrow enough that opening and closing it all the time is something you will do. The experience on the Pixel Fold has you using the external display more, at least in my personal experience. If I had to choose right this second, which one I would pocket, like, the next few weeks and see how that goes, I, I would still take the Z Fold 5. I'm curious how big of a component is my familiarity level with it. For some reason, the Z Fold 5 is a little bit more appealing to me. Maybe I need more time with the Fold. Maybe it needs some software tweaks and enhancements to be slightly less irritating, which is to be expected with a brand new player in this particular segment. But I think for now, Samsung still has the slight edge and I get a little Samsung sounding notification at the moment.